Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Hope you guys are having a good day today. And welcome back to episode two of the Android Kotlin introduction series. Now in the last episode, we kind of left off on the implementation of the FizzBuzz algorithm as well as how to create some classes using the Kotlin language. And in today's video, I wanted to quickly go over how to use the uh, UI builder to kind of put elements inside of the screen for our application. So let me show you guys what we have here. And this is the main activity where we left off last time. And if you guys wanna check out the last video, make sure to uh, click on the link in the description below. But anyhow, I would like to show you guys how to add elements inside of our page here. And this is our uh, main layout that you see right here. And the layout that we kinda want to achieve is something that looks like this, and this is uh, something that resembles the Facebook post, right? And if you scroll up and down, this is what you get. And this is a list view, and this is something that I'll show you guys how to build in a later series. But I would like to show you guys how to put, for example, this image view right here inside of this section, and then perhaps these two text views uh, inside of the right side right here. Okay, so how do we go about doing that? Well, you see this main activity uh, layout file right here, activity main. You wanna go ahead and open it up under res and layout. And what you see in here is kind of what you get for your application screen. Uh, currently it says hello world right there. And let's just say delete it by clicking it and hitting the backspace. And the first thing I wanna do is to just put in an image view on the top left corner. So this is very easy using the visual UI builder. I think that's what they call this thing. Uh, you just wanna click on images and you get this image view. You can drag this in here and it's very, very similar to uh, the interface builder in Xcode. I feel like it's maybe a little easier to use in some places and definitely a lot harder to use in other places. But anyhow, you can click on IC launcher, hit the okay. And you'll get this image view placed somewhere in the top left region. Now, the way this layout works, this uh, constraint layout guy, if you just click on this text right here, you see that it's a constraint layout. We have this XML that represents exactly what's going on inside of our layout. And uh, I typically would like to edit my files just using the XML and ignore this editor, but I find this is somewhat uh, useful to understand what exactly is going on behind the XML file. So let's just, let's just use this for now. So let's say we have this XML uh, or this image view right here in the top left corner. And let's say I want to pin it to the left like that and pin it to the top like so. I now have these two constraints set up for this image view such that if I wanted to push it 12 from the top, I can just do it simply with editing this little uh, margin constraint editor guy. And then if I wanted to change this to some kind of uh, fixed width and height, I can just give it perhaps 50 dp and 50 dp. I believe dp stands for density pixels and it's related to uh, different Android devices that have different uh, screen sizes and resolutions and they resolve it using something called density pixels. Uh, kind of a confusing topic so I'm not going to go over it right here. But anyhow, that's how we begin the layout for this image view on the very top left. So you can see how it's kind of easy to place things onto the screen. And if you go ahead and hit the run, it should automatically uh, refresh that screen that said hello world in the center and place this image view somewhere in the top left. It's trying to run, run, run. Uh, sometimes the Gradle process does take a while to download and refresh all of the dependencies but as long as you can get that to complete in a reasonable amount of time, you can get your application to uh, launch fairly quickly. I noticed that if you are between sessions of development and coding, it might take a while to refresh every now and then. So that's our image view on the very top left. And again, very, very easy to add into the screen with this visual builder guy. And let's move on to the Barack Obama text view on the right of the image. And this is something that you can find under text. And if you uh, wanna zoom in, zoom out, you can do this as well. So let's just zoom out a little bit to 25% and use a text view component by dragging it into this view somehow. So that's kind of what you get and you can sort of drag it here. Uh, but you also want to establish some constraints for this text view. So let's put it to the right of the image view by doing that. And then 
Let's also constrain the top of this text view to the top of the image view. So let's just left click on that connection and drag it up there. And then these views will kind of slide into place. And uh, if you want to bump this margin down to zero, you can do it like that and zero like that, or perhaps 12 uh, density pixels. And for layout width and height, I'm just going to set it to be wrap content. And for those of you guys that don't know exactly what that means, it's pretty much going to give us enough space to enclose all of the content available inside of this view. So if this text view has a lot of lines of text, it's just going to keep on uh, running vertically until we fill up all the text as well as horizontally. So you'll start to understand this more and more as you have uh, complicated views inside of your view hierarchy. So having said that, let's move on to trying to style this text view that says Barack Obama. And let's see, double click on this guy. You can start typing text here. So Barack Obama. Click on that, and then you can change some of the properties such as text color. So let's modify this with a black color. Now it's black. You can also change the font style to be bold like so. So again, pretty easy. And let's move on to something perhaps like the date of June 22nd at 1235. So how do we do that? Well, you just drag in another text view somewhere in here. I'm going to align it to the bottom of that top text view for the name and then the left, let's just align it to the left of the Barack Obama text field or text view rather. And this, if you change this to zero, it'll line up properly. And then if you change this to, I don't know, four perhaps, it might give you a better design right here. And let's see if we run this now, what do we get inside of our app? Uh, it should be quite nice in terms of the layout because everything is nicely packed in the top left corner just like how the Facebook application is and if you run it that's kind of what you get so to make this uh, look a little bit better <laughs> I'm going to increase the size of this image view there as well as let's see change the text to actually say something more meaningful so let's just change the height of this guy to perhaps 54 let's see 54 dp 54 dp and as you change it the view right here kind of changes uh, in live real time so let's just modify this to say let's see what do i have here june can i say june june what am i at june 22nd at 12 35 p.m lowercase p.m let's get a bullet point with uh option eight gives you a bullet point so that's what you see right there Let's run this perhaps one more time. Just make sure our text shows up properly. And then we'll move on to adding perhaps this text view right below with a bunch of text. And then you'll see what exactly wrap content does. So let's see what doesn't look right about this. So I'm going to change the text size and also let's see, change the spacing a little bit because it's not looking all that great. So let's say. Barack Obama, we want to change it to a size of 16 SP instead. I think SP stands for something else, like spacing pixels. I'm not really sure. But here we can also bump this to, let's see, we just want to bump this to 8 pixels from the image view. So do that. And that's what we get. So, how do we go about adding in the massive block of text right below the image view? It's very, very simple. If you just go back into the editor, drag in a text view somewhere right here, and you just want to make sure the top is constrained to the bottom of the image view, and then the left of the text view is on the left of the image view, and then the right of this is on the right of the entire container, which is known as the parent. And then the bottom, well, we don't really want to constrain the bottom because we just want to have it flow continuously until it is rendering all of the text inside of the text view. So let's say I pull in some long bit of text like this down here in the console. So I'm going to copy that and let's just paste that in there, paste that in there. So I just changed all that, hit enter, you get all of this text right here. Okay. So a couple things that you might notice is that the text right here is being chopped off on the right. 
um, but that's okay. I'm going to run the app. Sometimes running the application gives you a better rendering of what you get inside of your app instead of this blueprint thing on the right and this also uh, this live render on the left side. So that looks kind of close to what we want. Let me see this right here. I think I can just change this to zero on the top. Might be a little closer to the text and that's kind of what I would want. For this you can bump this four and it'll just bump that down a little bit. Uh, makes it a little closer to the center. And for this guy, what exactly do we want to do to fix this? I believe we want to change the wrap content, the width, to something else such as match constraint. And that gives us something that has a bit of padding on the left side here and the padding on the right side so that we get some bit of breathing room. Now, if uh, you want to make sure this match matches with the image view, you want to change this back to zero. Okay, so that's good. And this, because we are uh, constrained to the parent, we actually need to use eight uh, density pixels for the margin on the right side. So with all of that being placed inside of our editor, we can start to slowly see that it's becoming closer and closer to exactly what this is going to render out. Uh, we are not going to render out this whole thing, but this is kind of the exercise that I want to go through with you guys today to show you guys how much easier it is to place things onto the screen. And so typically, I don't really like using this editor, although as you can kind of just uh, see through this exercise, it is pretty easy to use. I typically like to edit the XML file and change things that way. Uh, there are pros and cons to the approach, just like how we have pros and cons to programmatically adding things inside of iOS using Swift. So one thing I wanted to show you about this editor uh, in the design mode is that sometimes your screen sizes become bigger and smaller depending on what kind of device you have. So if you modify this to be something else other than this pixel that we currently have selected at uh, 5.0, 1080 by 1920, you can change it to a totally different type of display. So click on this guy, it changes this to that right there. And if you zoom in a little bit and uh, scroll over to the left and right side, you see that even, uh, even though the screen has expanded to a totally different width, uh, the constraints allow us to expand the views and kind of auto size itself so that the margins and padding and all that good stuff is respected no matter what type of device you are on. So it's very, very similar to iOS and auto layout. Uh, setting all of this stuff up correctly can be a little bit of a learning curve, but once you get it down, it makes your uh, life as a developer a lot easier, especially on the front end side of Android development. So that's kind of how that works. And is there anything else that I want to show you guys how to do? Well, let's take a look at this uh, kind of finished application again. And you see these icons right here, this pin, this drop, uh, this drop down, pointer down thing, this globe and this like icon. Uh, those are actually coming directly from assets on my computer. So I wanna open that up for you guys. And let's see, I am on this folder right here. So. All of these images, for example, the pin looks like that. Uh, the pointer thing looks like that. And let me just copy and paste these couple of files along with Obama. I'm gonna copy these files, Command C. I'm just gonna paste it into this thing called a MIP map. And so I just want to show you guys how this works for one of these density uh, settings. Uh, folders so you can just either command and click and paste or command V uh, I think that's the base right there and I'm gonna copy all those three files that we had <coughs> right there so you see Obama pin and pointer down so once you have that inside of your project you can go back to the activity main XML file and let's just change this back to the pixel 5 which is what the simulator is trying to represent and let's see, zoom in a little bit. I believe I can click on that and change the source to something else. So let's change that to Obama and click on OK. You see Obama shows up inside of that image view. So if you run your application with uh, Control R, not Command R, you wanna make sure you get that correct. Control R will automatically run your app like that. 
So pretty easy. And let's try to place these other two images on the right side of the entire, I guess, post row. So let's see, how do we do that? Well, it's pretty simple. Again, you click on images, click on an image view, and then you just drag it in somewhere. And let's make sure we use the pointer down. So it's all the way down there. Uh, I kind of like to place it somewhere that uh, allows me to easily create these connections. So drag that to the right and drag this all the way to the top, I believe. And then we have that image right there. Drag in another image view somewhere. Click on the pin. Remember, this is the pin that we want to place to the left of that down arrow. So let's see, what if I click on this, make that the top of the pointer thing, make the right the left of the pointer thing, and I think we have something there. So the wrap content, because I want it to be a fixed width and height, I think I want to perhaps use 20, you know, 20 DP. You want to make sure you always include the density pixels, and that's what 2020 looks like. Right, so I want to push the pin down a little bit actually. So you see how sometimes you might get a little frustrated by clicking things and seeing a bunch of other stuff appear. This is why editing the XML is a little bit cleaner and my preferred way of doing things. So I want to push this down about 12. That brings that down to 12. And let's just put this, uh, let's see, what do we want to do here? Change this to perhaps 24. Oh god, 24 dp, tab, tab, 24 dp, hit enter, otherwise the changes do not take into effect. That's kind of what we have here, and what do we want to do? So let's put this as zero, that's closer to what I want, and hit the play or command R. You'll get the new layout inside of your application now, and it should look like what I want it to look like. So this over here is a lot closer to what I want it to be. And uh, that's pretty good for just a couple of minutes that we spent on the editor. Now again, this is a list view, so that means, well, what does that mean? Well, that means that we have to make a couple of- All right, so that's gonna wrap it up for today's video, as well as the series on the introduction of Android Studio using the Kotlin programming language. So I think a lot of you guys are probably wondering whether or not to use Kotlin or Java and because Kotlin is now being officially supported by the Google Android team, it is my recommendation to start looking into Kotlin more and more as you'll start to see a lot of teams uh, slowly migrate their code from old school Java to the new programming language of Kotlin. All right, if you're interested in downloading the code for the project today, you can find the link in the description below where you can find some of these assets as well as the layout and main activity files. So hopefully you liked today's video. Make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for the future series on how to build out the Facebook feed using Android and Kotlin. All right, that's going to be it for me today. Until next time, keep on coding, guys, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye and enjoy your day.